All right, so one thing that you might notice uh, when you're uh, trying to create these apps, you might have been on one computer and then switched to another computer. And sometimes what happens is on one computer it had a certain drive letter, and then on another computer it has a different drive letter. There's a way actually to switch the drive letters. So if on some computers this loads up on drive E, but then here it loads up in F, there is a way to switch these. Let me show you this. This might be useful to you. And, and again, I'm recording this in case you need to uh, do this again in the future. Now this is, do, this is something to do in Windows, and this should, be do, this should be something you can do in all versions of Windows. We've got Windows 7 at the moment, but it should apply on Windows 10 and such. Uh, you can right-click uh, Computer and go to Manage. Uh, and there's going to be an option over here to manage drives. See on the left side it says Disk Management under Storage. If you click on that, that'll let you know all of the disks connected to the computer. You just have to do right-click Computer and then Manage Disk Management. My flash drive is currently on F, but if I needed it to be on G or some other drive, uh, you have the option to uh, right-click your drive and you have change drive letter. Now, I would not do that. I would only do that if you have nothing running. You know, if you've got Visual Studio running and it's accessing your drive and then you try to switch drive letter, something weird will probably happen. Something bad will probably happen. So if you're going to switch drive letters, if you need to cha change drive letters, you should do it with nothing running, nothing open. And then in there it'll let you change the letter. but based on an open letter that another drive is not using. I wanted E, but something else is using E, so obviously I can't go to that one. I'd have to change the drive letter of that other one to X, and then I can change this one to E to take that drive letter. So a few of you had told me that you were having trouble with drive letters and such. This is one way to fix it. You can manage, you can go to right click manage, and then go in here and, and, and see about changing drive letters. Just right click, change drive letter. That may fix some of your issues sometimes. Any questions on that? Okay, so um, the other thing, as I said, uh, we're at a point where I feel we can start to publish this app, even though we can still put some polish on it. And I want to show you uh, the first uh, instance of actually publishing it to an app store. Over the weekend, I asked you to uh, create a, an account over at, at Amazon. If you didn't do it, uh, you, you, can, you can still do it at this point uh, while I move on to something slightly different. So developer.amazon.com. If you didn't get a chance to create it over the weekend, you can do it on your own. I'm not going to go through that step by step. I assume you have an account. What I'm going to show you is um, we need to um, deploy our app uh, for distribution to everyone. Right now, our app is in debug mode. And you see that every time in Visual Studio over here. We're, in, we're debugging in Android. But we have these other uh, options, specifically release. Now, don't change any of this yet. But I'm showing you here, eventually when our app is completed enough, we need to switch over to release. And then do a few more things. And then our app will be ready for release. What that does basically is it compresses it, it encrypts it, and gets it ready to be sent to the app stores. The app stores will not accept your app if it's still in debug mode. Now, remember how we can go over to Google Chrome and kind of look behind the scenes at a few things while our app runs? The reason for that is because we're in debug mode. Uh, you cannot use the Google Chrome developer mode to peek inside of Instagram, for example, or Twitter, because it's not in debug mode. It's in release mode. So before we switch to release mode, we need to prepare our, our app. We need to create a developer certificate. Now, we haven't done this in a little while, so I'm going to write some notes. I'm going to write some notes in a notepad file. I'll put this into the network folder a little later. 
and then we'll actually do this. So today's first day of May. And obviously we had a very beautiful spring day today. Okay, so what we're going to do, um, uh, preparing, preparing for uh, distribution of our app. So we've got some general concepts here. Um, create a developer account at the app stores. We have create a developer certificate aka a key store we have set our app to um, release mode via key store and upload our app to our developer account publish and then of course the final step so uh, we're going to do these today this shouldn't really take that long actually uh, the developer account um, the only one that will be required for the class is developer.amazon.com you can go to developer.apple.com developer uh, Android.com, you can go and create an account over there. But remember, those are not free. $28 or so to create the one at uh, Android.com. Uh, I think it's another $28 for the one for Windows, one time fee. But then it's $99 per year for the Apple one. I'm not going to ask you to create any of those. We're going to create the Amazon developer account, which is completely free. Um, what we are going to do together at this point is uh, create this developer certificate. At the moment, we're focusing on Android, but of course, we'll talk about covering the different platforms. But we'll cover Android first because it's the most straightforward and the most free. So, creating a developer certificate. Um, there's a documentation file that we're going to just sim simply follow step by step, and then we'll have our certificate. So, the thing about creating a certificate a developer certificate as an Android developer, it's very easy. We basically say, I'm a developer, here's my certificate, let me in. And they say, great, come on in. Apple is, uh, I'm a developer, here's my $99, please let me in. And they'll say, maybe we'll let you in. Um, but for uh, Android, it's a lot more uh, direct to get in as a developer, but a little more setup. So here's what we need to do. Go ahead and go uh, to your web browser and let's go to visualstudio.com. You'll find this documentation in a variety of places like at the official Google developer account. But I want to show it to you here inside of the Visual Studio documentation. Now I'm going to give you the direct link. It's actually already in the network folder. But I'm going to show you how you would get to the documentation in Visual Studio when you want to learn how do I set myself up to develop for Apple devices, for Windows devices, I'm using Visual Studio, and how do I use Visual Studio and Cordova to uh, create my apps? It's a little bit of a maze, and I have it in the network folder, but let me show you the, the long way here. VisualStudio.com, of course, is where you would go download the software. But also here under Support, let's go look at the Visual Studio IDE. So click on Support, click on Visual Studio IDE. There's a lot of frequently asked questions that might be useful. Scroll down past those things to Documentation. So scroll past the frequently asked questions and find Documentation. Just click on that icon. Scrolling down, we have a whole section on, OK, what do I need to do? What do I need to learn to make apps for Windows, 
mobile devices, games, and you'll see a variety of documentation on all of that. Lots of videos, lots of text, um, all of the documentation that you need. The whole point of this, showing you it to, showing this this way via Visual Studio is, what I like about using Visual Studio for making our apps is that again, it kind of shields you from the native code of each platform. If I wanted to make apps traditionally on Android, I'd need to learn Java. If I wanted to learn apps, to make apps in uh, uh, iOS, traditionally it was Objective-C, and now they're moving toward Swift, another language. And then traditionally, if I wanted to make apps for Windows, we would need to know C-sharp. I've mentioned this before. And I've said that instead, we're using Cordova, which is sort of a middleman, where we use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Cordova, thanks to Visual Studio, translates it to the appropriate platform. So here there's other tutorials that you can play with, videos to watch, a sample, sample app. We want to look inside of Browse the Docs. So under the column of mobile apps, select Browse the Docs. On the left side are various uh, activities and chapters. So, so on the left side, find the section Publishing. So on the left side, when you find Publishing, click on Publish to a Store. This is the main document I want to deal with at the moment. And this link, I've already put it into the network folder. So I showed you the long way to get to it, uh, and I'm recording it. But the direct link to that is in the network folder. This has some explanation about what you're about to do, how to set yourself up to publish your app on Android, iOS, or Windows devices. I want to convert my code so that it's the final Android app to send to the App Store. Or I want to convert my code to send it to, uh, to, to package it as the final iOS app to send it to the app stores. OK, we're going to focus on Android at the moment. If you scroll down, Android applications, it talks about um, your config XML file. It talks about remembering to set that up properly. We'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, it tells you what all of these little tabs mean and such. OK, that's fine. Keep going version code, etc. Great. Number two, Android generate private certificate. Uh, this is that step that I have here, uh, create a developer certificate. It's got different names. Here they're calling it private certificate, developer certificate, key store. You're going to sign, you're going to create a special file, which are your credentials. For the purposes of the class, this is another thing that we can just make up. It doesn't need to be real. For the purposes of the class, you can do that. But eventually, this key store file that we create is going to be very, very, very important. Because when you publish your apps for real, this key store file identifies you as the official developer, the official representative of a certain app. And when you want to release a version 2 of that app, you have to prove you're the, you're the correct developer. When you create new apps, you have to prove you're that entity. And all of that information will be stored in this key store file. So for the purposes of the class, you can make this up. But when you do this for real in the real world after you graduate the class, that key store file, you want to back it up and make backups of the backup. Uh, if you lose that file, you're going to have to create a new uh, certificate and then there'll be problems because you're not the official original app developer anymore, technically, according to this file. The way we create this file is straightforward. It's a little techy, but we'll be able to handle it because all the instructions are here. Uh, we're going to need to do this in the Windows command prompt. So go ahead and go to your Start menu. And you can search for prompt. And you should get the result. Command prompt. You don't need the developer command prompt, Visual Studio 2017. I think they do the same, but I'll just go with the first one. So search, search prompt. You should get command prompt. Go ahead and start that. 
that program. If your system is configured with the Java folder in its path, then you can skip the next staff. Uh, you can confirm this by typing at this command prompt here. Just type Java C and then press Enter. In my case, it's not directly connected to the Java program. Uh, what did you guys get? Same thing. Same thing. Okay, that's fine. Depending on when you installed Visual Studio, there may have been an option to set this or not. Basically, we need to use like the, 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 the behind-the-scenes Java software to create a developer certificate. We're going to need to type a few commands here to create the certificate. If, when we installed Visual Studio, it also activated Java in your path, we'd be able to type the commands and they'd work just fine. We instead have to type the commands in the right folder where the Java software is. And that's what this is saying. Uh, type that. If you receive an error message, the JDK is not in the path. Um, in the command prompt, change directories to your to the to your Java's bin folder. Uh, and usually it's something like inside of the program files folder. So let me show you how you can do that. Obviously, when you're in regular old Windows, you can open up a computer window and navigate easily. Well, for this technical thing, we need to do this inside of the command prompt. And I said, I think at the beginning of part two, I used to teach this class that it was all about typing the commands in the command prompt. There was no Visual Studio. Um, you, there was no click and drag interface. You had to do it all through here, typing these arcane commands that you had to memorize and type in perfectly, or else it didn't work. The only time we really need to mess with this nowadays is to create this key store file, this developer file. And we just need to do a couple of things here. Um, let's. Um, Type cd space backslash. Now that's a backslash, not a forward slash. The forward slash is uh, the same key as the question mark, and the forward slash leans forward. The backslash is that one that leans backwards, and it's right below backslash, uh, the, the backspace key. Type cd space backslash and press enter. cd space backslash enter. At the moment, when I started the command prompt, I was in the C drive, in the users folder, in my case, the instructor folder, yours probably C users lab. Well, when I did cd backslash, it took me to the root level of the C drive. So I'm in the C drive now. You can type dir to see a directory listing. These are all of the folders and files on the C drive, on the root level of the C drive. How did you get that? Which part? How did I get which part specifically? So what we're looking at here is the same as what you would see um, if you had gone into the local disk C, right? Because I see there's an ACT86 folder, and uh, the ACT86 folder is somewhere there uh, at the top. Yeah, right there, ACT86. So what we would see on a nice, safe window here, we would also see in the command prompt. Well, the documentation is saying, in your program files, in the Java folder, you're going to find what you need. So when you type dir, it shows you a directory listing, and I see there, program files. Well, you're not going to be able to click on any of this to do anything. You have to type it manually. What we have to type is cd space quote program space files. Actually, let me just double check something. OK, yeah, that'll work. Uh, so we're typing um, cd space quote program files end quote 
enter. So this is saying CD, change directory. I, I was first in my instructor's directory, the instructor's folder, and I did CD backslash, change directory, to the root level. Then I'm typing CD, space quotes, program files. I'm typing change directory into the directory in question. Uh, program files. If I wanted to change to the Windows directory, obviously CD space Windows. And then the prompt right here tells me, okay, you're in the C drive in the program files folder. If you type dir at that point, directory, it'll tell you all of the files and folders in this directory, and you see all of these. One of them is a folder up there, Java. We need to go into the Java folder. CD, change directory, space Java. Let's change, let's go into the Java folder. Not in this case, you need quotations when you've got a directory that has spaces. It wouldn't work, it wouldn't hurt if you just put quotes, however. Question? Okay. How do you delete? Can you go backwards? Yeah, you can press backspace just to back up like that. So let's do CD space Java. Enter. OK. The directions. OK. C drive, program files, Java. Now, this is where it's going to change because when this documentation was written, JDK version 1.8.0 underscore 111 was the version that was out when this documentation was written. This is why we can then, at this point, say DIR directory, show me the version I have or, or you have. And in my case, I have JDK 180112. What do you guys have? Yes. I got the same. Oh, so 112. Okay, good. So now we need to well, now we need to go into that folder. How do we do that? C D space and the name of that folder. JDK 1.8.0 underscore 112. Not JRE, that's something else. JDK, that's the Java, uh, the Java development kit. These are the Java runtime environment, just it's the wrong one. JDK, that's what the documentation says. I'm not making this up, I'm just following the documentation. Were you referencing Joe Rogan? Maybe subconsciously, I don't know. So, now, what does the documentation say? I'll be with you one moment. What does the documentation say at this point? Go to bin, yes, if I see here. OK, inside of JDK, then inside of bin, binaries, executables. You can confirm if you'd like. You can type dir, and you'll see a bunch of stuff. And one of the folders is bin. All of them that are folders are dir, lib folder, gre folder, bin folder, cd, space, bin, enter. Nothing happens until you press enter. And if you'd like to, you can dir there, and there's all of these apps in here. Um, one of the apps is one called Key Store or a uh, Key Tool. There's an app called Key Tool. The documentation says, okay, once you get to the right folder in the command prompt, you're going to execute the following command. Uh, you can actually copy and paste this, but let me tell you what, it, what this is saying. Uh, we're going to use the Key Tool app. We're going to generate a key pair. We're going to create a special file. Uh, we'll get back to V in a moment. We're going to create a key store file. We're then going to save it somewhere. File path to your key store file dot key store. 
space dash alias. I'll cover alias in a moment. Key algorithm, RSA, key size 2048 validity, 10,000 days, I believe. So what this thing is doing is we're going to create a special file that identifies us as a developer. We can do this ourselves because uh, Android apps can be, uh, you can do this with Android apps easily. You cannot do this on iPhone apps. You have to go through the iPhone, the Apple website. You have to pay the $99. You have to go through their application. You have to connect a compatible phone. You have to do all of these hoops to get a special certificate that says you are an Apple developer. Congratulations. For us, for Android, yeah, we have to jump through a few hoops of going to the right folder, but then we type the command, and congratulations, you're an Android developer. That's one of the big differences, and one of the reasons why I focus a little bit more on, on uh, Android at the beginning, because it's, it's a little more direct. So within this command prompt cursor here, we will type key tool, space, gen key pair, we're going to generate a key pair. Make sure there's that dash and that there's no space between the dash and that parameter. Space V for verbose. It's just going to give you a lot of feedback, a lot of output. It's going to tell you what it's doing. Space dash key store. Let's create a file. store all of this data. What follows next is a, is a file name where you're going to save this. I think what we can do here is just do, well, my drive letter of my flash drive in my case is F. If yours is G or E, you're going to change this because I'm saying on my F drive, colon, backslash. I'm going to create a key store file, and we'll keep it simple just with your last name. Smith.keystore. It cuts off on the end here, sorry. But um, it's your last name, dot, keystore. Now that's what the documentation is saying. Again, I'm just following what it's saying. Somewhere you're going to save a file very simply on my F drive colon backslash some name dot keystore. Your last name dot keystore. It went over to the next line. Space. Dash alias. So what we're about to create is sort of this, a keychain with keys. The, the whole keychain is that key store file. This keychain is all about keys for this campus. I don't have any other keys here except for keys for this campus. But I've got a key for this door, and I've got a key for that cabinet, and I've got a key for the instructor's room. So what's coming up next is we're creating an alias. We're sort of creating an individual key for an individual purpose. The key store is the whole keychain. The alias is the one key for a certain purpose. And here, to keep it easy, just put your last name again. There's going to be a specific key in your key store file with the same last name, uh, just to keep it all simple stored on your F drive. That's what this is saying here. Let's create an alias. Let's create a specific key, whatever you want to call it. Space key ALG. That's an L, not a 1. Stands for key algorithm. Yes, it is a lot to type, but don't worry. If you make a mistake, it'll tell you. It just won't work. And you can type it again. Um, dash key a l g space r s a all capital letters. This is the specific algorithm we're using to generate our key. 
space dash key size. Space 2048, 2048 bytes, two kilobytes of data. Uh, I guess that's just arbitrary, so I'm just typing it exactly as is. Space dash validity, that's in days. 10,000 days, I think, is like 30 years. We are setting up, we are setting ourselves up here that the validity of this file is going to be active for the next 10,000 days, which is about 30 years. Uh, so I, uh, I plan on being an app developer for the next 30 years. How about you? So it is a lot to type. You want to double and triple check your typing, because if you mistyped something, it'll just say error. And if you, let me just do something quickly here. If you were typing commands and the command was wrong, you know, if it gave you some error or something, instead of retyping the whole thing, you will actually be able to press up on the keyboard to retrieve your last command, and then you can use your arrow keys here to fix what you mistyped. You won't be able to click right here to make a change. No, you have to use the arrow keys to scroll around what you typed. And if I'm trying to type all of this key tool, blah, 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 and I made a mistake early on over here, it's not key tool, it's key tool. I cannot click at the beginning here to make a change. I have to use the arrow keys on my keyboard to back up. Then I can go in and change it. And again, if you, if you get an error in a moment, you don't have to retype the whole thing and make another mistake. You can press up on the keyboard, and it'll retrieve the last command you typed. If you, if you think you typed all of this correctly, well, what's about to happen? Uh, you know, it tells you here, type this, replace this with your own stuff, etc. Okay, good. What's going to come up next is it's going to, before you press enter, what it's, what it's going to ask you for is all of this information for you to fill in for real or fake about you as a developer. It's going to ask you for a password that unlocks the whole keychain. It's then going to ask you, okay, what's your developer, what's your name, first and last name? What's your organizational unit? You know, what's your, um, your job title? We'll do this in a moment. What's your company? What's your city? What's your state? What's the country are you in? When that gets confirmed, It'll start to make a special file, and it'll ask you another password. You can use the same one as before. One password to unlock the whole keychain, and one password to unlock one key. You can use the same password twice, but it's more secure to have different passwords. That's up to you to decide. And then it'll say, OK, we're going to store your developer credentials wherever you told us to. We'll go on to step three, but let's see here. I've got, I'm about to go forward here. I'm going to double check my spelling. Key tool, gen key pair, key store, F drive, etc., alias, key alg, key size, validity. No one pointed that out that I misspelled validity? Minus 10 points for everyone. Validity. Remember, you can press arrow keys to go. Did everyone blindly type validity like me, or did you type validity properly? OK, so validity 10,000. OK, I'll press Enter. Enter key store password. Uh, you should write this down somewhere or memorize it, because you're going to have a hard time retrieving any of this. But again, you can create as many key stores as you want. It's just that a certain key store is going to be the one that identifies you in the future. You cannot see what you're typing. You just have to know you typed it right. Enter. You have to retype it. You can't see it, but I trust I typed it right. If, if you didn't type it right, it'll tell you. I typed it right. And again, it'll ask you what was inside of the, um, on the documentation. OK, well. Just fill this in. It doesn't have to be real. Now, if you want to change any of this of the future, uh, it's kind of difficult. So if you misspell your name in this key store file, it'll be difficult to change. 
it's that's built in by design if any key store file was easily editable then people could steal each other's key store files and suddenly I'm the official app developer of Apple apps so that's why when you create this it's a little difficult to edit name of my organizational unit I'll just say app developer my sort of um, job title enter name of my organization if I misspell this it'll give me a chance to fix it uh, on, a, on a later step name of my organization you can make this up completely Smith apps LLC whatever whatever fake or real name you want to make up for you as an app developer company and again with Android you are an app developer if you say you are over on um, iOS you are an app developer if they say you are by paying and setting up the system and all of that here yeah I'm an app developer Smith apps LLC we're very famous we've made a lot of apps enter what is the name of your city or locality? just whatever makes sense name of your state California name of your country two-letter code US if you're in any other country you need to type the two-letter uh, initials of your country, right? If you're doing apps in Mexico, MX, England, UK, etc. Enter. Is this correct? Okay. Name Victor Smith, yes. Developer Smith Apps. Okay, looks good. If I misspelled anything, I can press, I can type. No, and then it'll let me type it again. If I don't type yes, it will assume no and have you type it again. That's what the brackets are. It assumes name is unknown. It'll assume state is unknown. It'll assume player unknown. It'll assume no. If you don't type yes, and make you type it again. Make sure you type yes. Press enter. It's going to create the file. One more thing. Enter a password for this alias. At the top where I set up there, alias Smith. Type a password to access now the individual key in the keychain and you can type the same one that you set up earlier up here now again you cannot see it and every time I teach this people stumble on this a lot because you cannot see this you cannot really easily retrieve it and people ask me for help and such and I can help to a certain degree but then eventually for most answers it's do it again because I cannot access it, I cannot edit it, I cannot retrieve it. They do it on purpose. They make this hard to set up so that no one, you know, steals each other's credentials. Eventually, if I do this correctly, it'll say storing on my F drive smith.keystore. And if I look on my F drive back on the safety of Windows, there's my file. We're going to pause right here to make sure everyone got this going. Then we'll, follow, then we'll keep following the instructions over here because then after creating that file, then we need to apply it in our project. We'll do that in a moment. Let's pause here. Again, all of this is coming from these instructions, but anyone having any trouble? So you need to make sure you've got that key store file. Is the individual password or do they have to be the same? It's safer to have two different passwords, but I would say it's okay to have the same. Okay, but um, it, so in general, to understand, the first time we enter, it goes for a chain, yes. and the second Thank you.
doing here is we're creating this certificate where it, which we use to vouch for our app. This file, I'm creating it just completely fake for the purposes of the class, smith.keystore. Uh, you can change the file name, but you cannot change the contents of it. If you try to open this in Notepad++ or Visual Studio, it'll just show you gibberish. It's been encoded, encrypted, so it's also not very easy to change the fields inside of this. That's the whole point. So if you misspelled your name, by the second time it confirms it with you, the only thing I can tell you is just do it again. Right? You can press up and it'll bring back your last command and you can change it. Um, so I'm going to assume I did it right at this point. Uh, on my flash drive, in, in, you know, the uh, in the Windows folder over here, in the Explorer window, I can see that it's right there on my flash drive. 
the documentation says, okay, if you want more details, go read that. Android, modify the Android app build configuration. Now that you have a key store, you must configure your project to use them. So we're going to edit that in a moment. Uh, going back to Visual Studio, we can do the part actually in part one, just very briefly to look at this in, in section one right here. Uh, modify your config XML file. Let's, took, let's take another look at our config XML file. Step one before we go to step three. In Visual Studio, open config XML. Is just reminding you, look through your various screens to confirm that this is all as expected. Common screen. This is what I would uh, recommend for the moment. Um, instead of all of us having the exact same name on the App Store, uh, I would like that you put your last name and then CBDB. Uh, for the purposes of the school project, again, for the final assessment and such, I want to find your app on the App Store. If I just search for CBDB, I'm going to find everyone's app. If I search for your particular last name, CBDB, I hope to find your particular app to complete the assessment. Package name, you do not want the same one I have right here. If you've been using the one that I've from my files all along, you definitely need to change this. This package name is the unique identifier in the App Store to differentiate your app from someone else's. If I uploaded my version of CBD with my package name of Smith, and you try to upload your ver version, it'll be rejected. There's already a Smith app up there. So you want to make sure yours is different and do not pick any of the ones I'm making up here. You want to put your own, you can make it fake, you can put one, two, three, whatever, but it's com.something.cbd. I guess what you could also do is something like, you know, net, if you really wanted it, dot, you know, net.smith or biz or whatever. This is a reverse uh, file name. Uh, this is a reverse domain name, isn't it? You know, google.com, smith.com. It's just backwards. com.smith dot the name of the app. Something valid as well is something like this. No spaces, no capital letters. You could do it this way com.smith.smith, whatever. But again, don't do this, because when I upload mine, yours will conflict. Version 1.1. Put today's date. We're already at 2018.05.01. Two months ago, we uh, started this project. If you want to change any of this, you know, if you're using my version, you probably want to put your name as the author, your company's name, description, save, track, and view your comic book collection. That's fine. Or if you want to add more to it, you could. If you want to change any of that, that's fine. Going over to Android. We are going to release version, ultimately version one of this app to the Amazon App Store today. So it's going to be one. When we then uh, write some more code to our app and release it with you know, the social sharing features that I'm talking about, well, we're going to change that eventually to two. And these will always change as whole numbers. Eventually, when we release a new version to the App Store 3, I'll come back to this because this is just simply in a, an ever incrementing number. Uh, not exactly what we see under common, where here I have 1.1.2018.501. Let's say I simply misspelled something in the app and I'm releasing a minor version of it, 1.2. I would still put version code 2 right there. Uh, let's say uh, I'm going to do a whole huge change to the app in a few months. Version 3.1 20089.01. 
that say I've made a huge change. This is a major change to the app. Minor and build. I would um, still be incrementing this number here. Version code 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, whatever. Incrementing. Whole numbers. So uh, just save this file and then close the config XML. Yes? I know that you have, as your launch role, you have single top people and check on Oh, is yours different? Yeah, mine says landscape and Nope, launch mode is something else. You're looking at uh, common orientation, and mine is portrait as well. If you're in common and then it says orientation portrait, that's fine. If it says landscape, I would put it in portrait. Okay, so I'm going to save this config XML file and I'm going to close it. In the documentation, that's what this first section was. Simply, you know, go back to your config XML file, check your various screens. Part two was generate the private certificate, which is what we just did. Part three. Okay, in the Solution Explorer, expand the project folder, double click on the projects, build. Dot JSON file. So under Solution Explorer on the right here, you should see a build.json file. Double click it. This has a simple JSON file. This has a file in JSON format, which you'll see the curly braces <coughs> at the beginning and the end of the file. Mine's opening up a little slow. But you will see your JSON file. Here it is. So curly braces. Uh, we've got the Android uh, key and various values. Release key store, store password, alias password, key store type. They're all empty. What the documentation says is. Populate the build JSON file with the key store and key details. So we're saying uh, when we create our Android project, set for release, set for the app stores, we are providing our key store file. The example is wherever they put their key store file. In your case, hopefully, if you followed what I did, you're going to type the, your drive letter, colon, uh, backslash, the name of your key store file. Obviously, if you did not call your Smith and you type Smith, it will not work. When you created your file in the command prompt, You called it something and saved it somewhere. So in my case, it's on my F drive. And I'm going to double check just because I forget about this easily. Yep, right there, Smith Key Store. OK. Then we've got store password. Uh, you could type your password right here, and it will automatically grab it and use it. Or it's OK to not put your password here for a little more security and then it will ask you when it needs it I won't type a password under store password or password because I don't want you to see my password you could type your password in these fields and then it won't ask you it'll just use it if you don't type a password it'll ask you alias remember we created a specific key inside of the keychain the first line is what's your keychain, and then the alias is what's the what's the name of your key on the key store, what's the password to that key. Again, you can leave both of those alone 
and it will ask you when it needs it. So that's what it's saying here. Path to your key store file. Put your password here if you want it to be visible to everyone. What's the name of the alias in that key file? What's your password to that key if you want everyone to see it? You don't have to put anything under key store type. Save this file and close this file. Documentation further says, OK, the final step involves creating a release build of the Cordova app. On the standard toolbar, choose Android as your platform. We're currently working with Android. Check. Two, re choose the release build configuration. We're currently under debug configuration. Change it to release. It usually has to think for a moment. They might say not responding, just keep waiting. OK, so we're doing Android. We're doing release. Choose one of the Android emulators or a physical device. I'm going to go with a physical device. I've got one plugged in. So it looks 99% the same as all of these months that we've been doing this. But the big difference is it's set to release, and we've changed that build.json file to say, now when we create our app, use this official key to put my credentials into the app so that when we upload it, the App Store sees it as legitimate. We cannot upload apps to the App Stores that are still in debug mode. In the Build menu, here's another slightly different thing. In the Build menu, select Build Solution. This creates a release build of the app with an APK extension. And I'll show you where that file is in a moment. So Build menu. Build solution. First item up the top. I think that's the same as simply pressing that run button, but I would be safer by following the documentation. Build solution, Control Shift B. Build solution. This deployment will be very similar to before. This output will be similar as before, but then if you didn't type your password, into build JSON, it'll pop up here to ask you, or it'll tell you there's an error like me. Let's see, uh, unexpected token S. What's that? Um, let's see, did I misspell anything? Build error, unexpected token S under build JSON. Okay, I might have misspelled something. Build JSON file. Um, Okay, uh, yes, I think that needs to be a double slash, yes. Uh, that's what the documentation said. Yes, okay, good eye right there. We probably all got this error. Uh, the documentation in the build JSON file had a double backslash for the escape character. That makes sense. So, sorry about that. Let's go back to your build.json file. And it's backslash, backslash, two backslashes. Yours work with only one? Yeah. Can I get some of your good luck? <laughs> Didn't complain. OK, can I get some of your good luck? Yeah, yeah, mine had it also a moment ago until I put the backslash. So the squiggly line, I believe, if you hover over it, it's I believe it's saying something about escape characters or something. So is it work? If you got a success, that seems good. Just hold on a moment. Okay. If you want to confirm no error with the squiggly line, I would be safer by putting the two backslashes. And then I'm going to try again. Build, build solution.
All right, so mine is building. Here we go. Uh, I didn't put in my password for everyone to see in the build JSON file, so it pops up here. Put in that password that you didn't give before. That was the that was the password to unlock the whole keychain. Then another one. Enter this password to unlock the um, individual key. If you type that wrong, it'll tell you here eventually. It doesn't give you feedback right away. When I build successful. If it says build successful, just wait a moment. You're on the right track, and then I'll show you what to do after that. So as I'm waiting here, uh, it's saying that you're trying to build, and you will have an APK file. We're going to see this APK file in a moment. That's the file we're ultimately going to upload to the app stores in a moment. Ultimately, in my case, it said, OK, total time, 1 minute, 10 seconds. Built the following, done, success. OK, so in my case, on my flash drive, in my CVDB 501 folder, in my CVDB folder, in my platform folder, in my Android folder, in my build folder, in my outputs folder, in my APK folder is the final app. This .apk file is what we will upload to the app stores. This file, if you got success, we can see it right now. Go ahead and open a regular old, you know, Explorer window here. Go ahead and open a Windows window, and we'll go over to your uh, flash drive. So, I'm going. Uh, I'm going to my flash drive. So this output is, is telling me, on my flash drive in your project folder in CBDB, inside my project folder CBDB, inside of uh, platforms, there's a folder platforms we never needed to go into before, platforms. I'm currently working only in Android, so that's the only folder there. I see an Android folder inside of Android. Inside of build, we've just built our app. So inside of the build folder, inside of outputs, inside of APK, we have our Android package. We have, in my case, I've got four. Android debug, debug unaligned, Android release, Android release unaligned. The one we care about is Android release. There's still copies before I did this build, the one when, we, when the class started. I did a plain old debugged version, which is not the one the App Store wants. The App Store wants that APK, that Android package file. It's not an EXE. It's not an EXE or anything like that. Uh, not an EXE for Windows. It's sort of an EXE for Android. It's APK. It's an Android package. But this is the file that I ultimately will release to the App Store. I want to make a copy of it. I want to right-click Copy, and I'm going to put it on the root level of my flash drive. Right-click Copy, and then we'll go back to the top level of my flash drive and paste it. the actual app, then I've copied it out of that folder, I pasted it into the root level, it's down to only about 2 megabytes. The whole project, before it's compressed and completed and put for release, is I think like 50 megabytes at the moment, uh, or oh, 90 megabytes. 
almost 100. The whole app is then compressed into this final APK file. Uh, this can be renamed, and I would recommend to rename it such as your last name, dash cvdb, dot apk. Uh, don't, re don't remove the APK part at the end. This is what the documentation was saying. When, you, when the build completes, look for an APK file inside of this folder. When uploading the app to the App Store, be sure to select the file that does not include the word unaligned. Unaligned is basically uncompressed. Uh, I believe the App Store will, re will reject the unaligned version. And you don't want to publish that one because that's the one that people could get into. That's the one people can hack into a lot easier. This one with Android release, that's the one that's been compressed, encrypted. Your code should be safe, unless someone really, really, really wants to crack your app. But you get the debug version, which you don't want to upload to the App Store. And I get these release versions. Don't use the unaligned version. We will, we will see what, how to use that in a little bit. At this point, you have, you have a, a release version of the app all ready to be distributed through Google Play or Amazon App Store. And then there's a the part about setting it up for uh, iPhone. We're going to pause at this point for our first break. We want to confirm that all of this worked. We want to confirm that you've got your, um, your app on your flash drive. And then after the break, we'll go back to the developer account on, on uh, Amazon and see how to release it. It's 7.30, we'll be back at 7.40, uh, and then we'll go on. Just one moment.